Hi there, I'm Craig Taylor and once again a huge thank you for taking the time out of your day to join me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. For those of you that, uh, that know me or have watched my introductory video which I'll link to up here, you'll know that um, I, for a big part of my life, was a soldier in the British Army, starting at the age of 16. I remember getting posted to my very first unit, my very first you know, group of people that were working soldiers, that were trained soldiers. And as is always the case when you're the new guy there or the new guys there, you kind of get the, the crappy jobs that no one else wants to do. And one of those was to clean out this huge, old, dusty, musty, fusty storeroom. Um, it took us a few days to clear it out. And in there, I found a, an unissued, very old but unissued, completely pristine condition, uh, Ministry of Defence issue axe or hatch, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was covered in thick dust but it still had all of the oil and the lubricant and the protection on it and it was wrapped in sort of a waxed paper. So I appropriated said hatchet and it accompanied me for almost all of my 16 year career. During those 16 years, it really suffered some abuse. I probably sharpened it about three times in 16 years. In fact, I didn't sharpen it at all. I gave it to an armourer to sharpen. I didn't look after the handle. I didn't oil it. I really didn't look after it. And quite how it put up with 16 years of abuse with so little care and attention is beyond me, but it did. And then of course I left the army and, and gave it away or threw it away or sold it. I can't remember what I did with it. And of course now I'm into this, this life of, of, of learning about bushcraft and an axe, whilst not an essential piece of kit at all, I'm not saying that it is, does seem to have you know, significant uses and can make life a lot easier if you're using, you know, if you're doing stuff in such a way that, that would require you to use a heavy cutting um, or edge like an axe. So what have I gone and done? Well I've gone out and bought, whoops, just pull the camera tripod there. I've just gone out and bought a new axe. It's a Hunter Force classic hunter's axe. It's about a 20 inch handle. It's a two pound head. I am very keen that I don't use it yet. I'm very keen that before I start abusing this axe, that I look after it, that I do some, some preparatory work on it to make sure that when I start to use it, it doesn't suffer the same abuse or it is able to withstand the abuse better than the previous axe that I had when I was when I was in the army, when I was in the military. So I've been YouTubing and Googling around and I found three tips, if you like, that, that across the board people seem to recommend for, for setting your axe up for use in the future, an initial setup, and also maintaining it. So why don't you join me and have a look at these three axe care tips that I found from other people. And I will, as always, of course, be linking to people either up here or down below. I'll be linking to those blogs and YouTube videos and articles to give credit where credit's due. So why not join me and see how I'm going to prepare and look after my axe in the future. So let's take a quick look at the parts of the axe that I'm going to be preparing, ready to take this axe out for the first time. Initially, I'm going to be concentrating on the actual head of the axe. Then I'm going to be turning my attention to the handle of the axe. And finally, I'm going to be talking through what I'm going to do to protect this area of the axe here, which I believe is called the shoulder. So the head, the handle and the shoulder. With the head, I'm looking at protecting it from corrosion, rust. With the handle, I'm looking at protecting it from water ingress and the problems that that can cause. And this area here, the shoulder of the axe handle, I'm looking at protecting from my probably very poor woodsmanship and overstriking with the axe handle. So let's look quickly at the products that I'm gonna use for each of those. For the axe head itself, I'm going to be using good old common olive oil. For the shoulder of the handle, I'm going to use some paracord. And for the handle length itself, I'm going to be using some boiled linseed oil. Let's turn our attention first of all though, to the axe head and the olive oil. So I've done a fair bit of reading online about what the best oil or oils are to use on the head of the axe. And as usual, there are a million different opinions and ideas what to use. 
some people are using food-based oils, other people are using more something like three-in-one or gun oils, those types of oils. But I've settled for olive oil and I've settled on olive oil for two reasons. Firstly, if I happen to ever use this axe for game preparation, so I'm thinking maybe taking the feet and legs off rabbits or maybe the heads off rabbits if I'm hunting, then I'd really rather have an oil on the axe head that is you know, food friendly for want of a better phrase. The second reason and probably the more realistic reason if I'm honest is I use olive oil on my bushcraft knife and I also use olive oil to cook when I'm actually out cooking when I'm camping. So it kind of made sense to, to use the same oil that I'm gonna be using for those two circumstances on my axe head as well. Why carry another oil with me that only has one purpose? So I'm going to be using olive oil on my axe head, on my knife blade, and also when I cook as well. So it kind of makes sense to carry one oil that will cover off all three. And so all the head of the axe all I'm going to do is take a clean rag, pour a good amount of olive oil onto there, and then just gently wipe that over the head of the axe itself, taking obvious care when I get to the cutting edge, making sure that I get into all the nooks and crannies on both sides of the axe head, as well as the underside and the top side of the axe head as well. And then just using the other side of the rag to just dry off any excess And there I have oiled up my axe head, ready for me taking it outdoors, but of course, prepare it for first time use. Let's take a look at those. To prepare the handle of my axe, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the axe head protector back in place and just tie it off because I anticipate that I'll be handling the head of the axe and obviously the last thing I want to be doing is handling the sharp head of the axe particularly when it's just been oiled up. So once I've got that covered and protected I'm going to bring into play the boiled linseed oil that I mentioned earlier on and another clean rag and no prizes for guessing all I'm going to do here is take some linseed oil onto the rag and then just wipe it very gently down the actual axe handle itself. And I'm going to continue doing that until I've covered the entire handle from top to bottom 360 degrees around the handle itself. Again, taking care to pay attention to any nooks and crannies, such as the bottom of the axe handle here, making sure that that's covered, as well as the area of the axe handle here, where it inserts into the axe head. Now, I've been doing a bit of reading about how often I should do this preparation, um, and the answer is, is quite often in order to build up a lacquer and a layer of protection and I have noticed that some people have advised, which is quite easy to remember, that I should oil it once a day for a week. So I guess that's this week taken care of. Then I should oil it once a week for a month. Then once a month for a year. And then once a year for life. So in a nutshell, I build up a lot of protection in the early days over the coming weeks and months. And then after that, it's more a case of maintaining that protection and making sure that I've always got a nice coating of this boiled linseed being applied to it on a fairly regular basis. So that's how I'm going to build up the protection for the actual axe handle itself. So to start using this paracord, I'm just going to take a bite of paracord. That's a length that's doubled back on itself. I'm going to lay that along the axe handle with the loop pointing towards the bottom of the axe and with the end dangling over the top of the axe. And I'm just gonna lay it there. I'm gonna pinch it into place using my thumb to hold the paracord together to stop it falling off the edge of the axe. And I'm gonna pinch that as close as I can 
to where the, the head of the axe, the metal part of the axe is. I'm going to pinch that in place. I'm then going to take the long end of the paracord, the part that's been left dangling, and I'm going to wrap this around the edge of the axe handle. I'm going to start coiling it down towards the, the bottom of the axe. This you can, you can see why I've left the protection, the, the guard here on the cutting edge of the axe because my hand is moving around that area. I'm just going to keep wrapping this around. Every now and then I want to stop and just bunch this paracord up. I don't want it overlapping but I also don't want any gaps appearing between it. I'm going to turn it over to the other side and just make sure that on the other side, the side that is blind to me, that no gaps are appearing in the paracord there. I'm just going to keep wrapping that around. I'm not putting too much tension on this. I'm putting a little on, but I'm not, you know, I'm not putting my body weight behind this. I'm not exactly pulling this tight. I'm just curling it around, putting a little bit of finger tension on there, but nothing more than that. And I'm going to carry on doing that until I feel that I've protected enough of the axe handle from any overstrikes. Once I feel that I've done enough, I'm going to take this end of the paracord that I've been working with and you'll notice that that original bite that we created at the beginning has now formed a loop and that loop has now been created because it's been trapped by the paracord layers that we've put on there. I'm going to take this end of the paracord, I'm going to feed it from the bottom up through that loop and pull it tight like that. Then we're going to come to this end of the paracord, the part that we've been ignoring for quite a while. And I'm going to start to pull that through. And as you notice, as I start to pull that, this loop of the paracord here, this bait, is now going to be pulled down and underneath these layers of cord here. And that's going to help to put some extra tension on them and tighten them up because that wasn't there before. And now I'm going to introduce it so it will expand this paracord and tighten it up. I'm just going to pull it through, you notice it starts to disappear now and it starts to be fed underneath those layers of cord. Now I've seen some videos where people pull this cord right out of the end and I've seen some where people kind of leave it in the middle. I like the idea of leaving this loop, of leaving that loop that's been created inside the paracord because it's chunky, it's large, it's going to help to put extra tension on this paracord. So I'm not going to pull it out of the end here, as some people do. I'm going to leave it, you can probably just see the bump there. I'm going to leave it underneath these layers to create that extra tension. So here we are with my Hultafors Classic Axe prepared for first time use. Let's just have a run through what I did. Remember I oiled the axe head using olive oil and the reason that I chose olive oil was because it was clearly a food grade oil and it's also something that I carry in my kit for cooking with so it had a dual purpose. I prepared the length of my axe handle with boiled linseed oil. I oiled it up every day for a week, made sure that I dried off any excess before moving on to the third and final stage which was to create this somewhat crude but hopefully effective protection around the, the top of the axe handle here where it joins the axe head from over striking. In terms of this, I've read quite a few YouTube reviews and general blog reviews that this is a, this is a good idea. I've read other people say that it slips and comes undone quite quickly. I guess from my perspective, I'm interested to find out which of those two categories I'll fall into. It does look like the kind of thing that will slip and give way and end up becoming quite frustrating. So I may decide that I want to move towards something like a leather protection around here. One of the plus sides of using this, of course, is you've always got some paracord to hand if you ever need some and have run out of your main supply. So again, it's kind of a dual purpose. So that's how I've prepared my axe for first time usage. What would you do differently? Would you use a different oil? Do you prepare your axe handle differently? What about protecting it from overstrikes? What do you do differently to what I've done here? Or what have you tried in the past that's similar to this and what's worked and what hasn't worked? 
I'm also interested to hear if there's anything else that you do to prepare your axe for first time usage. Again, as I said at the very beginning of this video, I'm a complete novice in this area, so I'd really appreciate any ideas, suggestions, tips and tricks that you might have discovered along the way that I could also put into practice to help me protect my axe. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video and who knows I may be well swinging this axe um, and I'll give you an update as to how that's gone. So thanks ever so much for watching. As always if you found this useful, if it's given you an idea or some inspiration or it's made you think, please do click that like button. If you want to respond to any of the questions I asked a few seconds ago, then by all means comment, I'd really love to hear that. And if you think that there's some value in this and there's something that you'd like to see more of in the future, don't forget to click that subscribe button and keep updated for any future videos from me, Craig Taylor, at the Bushcraft Padawan. Thanks for watching.